So great catching up with my next guest. It has been a while, but he's got a big fight coming up right around the corner here. April 15th, UFC Fight Night in Kansas City. He's going to be taking on Brandon Royville. It's Matthias Nikolau back here on the program. Matthias, how are you? What up, James? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me in here again. And that's it. Excited for my next challenge on April 15th. Yeah, we're really excited. Uh, we last saw you fight in December. Here we are talking about a fight in April. Was this the right amount of time off in between fights? Yeah, it was good. After the fight, I could uh, take a time off. You know, it was perfect timing on the end of the year. And then I just started the year back on training, you know. And I'm feeling good. I feel it's good to have a lo- like those fighting... Uh, how I say I am doing... I'm fighting like... Uh, in a short period, you no know, getting uh, more comfortable with it, you know, no injury, no nothing. So I think it's pretty good. I'm ready to go. Yeah, and in a really big fight, like I mentioned. We'll talk about that in one sec, but we got to talk about your last fight, man. What a win that was. TKO finish over Matt Schnell. I actually looked it up. That was your first TKO win in the UFC. How satisfying was that victory, finishing a tough veteran like Matt Schnell? It was really good. I, I will not lie. Uh, I wanted to finish a fight. Uh, of course, every time that I go to a fight, my idea is to finish before it ends, you know, not letting to the judges. I think not just because uh, the people want that, but because I think this is the, like, the whole part of how to finish your opponent. Sometimes you can do it on the high, high level, such as the UFC, always fighting with the top 10 uh, opponents. But fortunately, I could do uh, uh, this TKO victory right now, and it was good. Uh, I think that is not just because the way I fought, also because the way he matches now fights. And I think uh, Brando Royval is also uh, aggressive, just like matches now is. Of course, they are different. They have different skills, different holes in the games, but. I think this will be a really exciting fight because of that as well. As well, Yeah, no, it is. Uh, this is a really high-level fight. Excited for this one. Uh, what about training camp? Who have been some of the main training partners you've been working with helping you get ready for this fight? Uh, Pedrinho Facão, which is not just my training partner, but also one of my main coaches. I train with him daily, and Rapidinid is here. And I have a lot of great training partners. You know, I have some UFC guy there. Actually, we have a uh, Rafael Estevan, we call him a Capazinho. He's going to do his UFC debut. I'm not sure when, but I think it's like two weeks after I will do. He had a great fight on Contender Series. And also, Jafel, we was training a lot together. He just did a, a great fight against Mokaev. It was a good one. And we have a lot of great names here. We have a uh, Breno, we call him Paku. He doesn't like too much. But his his nickname he is like a fish from the north from the, the from the country, and man, this man just made his pro debut and he's going really really good. He he had an amazing and amateur uh, record and now he just made his pro debut on show two and he got a first round knockout. So I have a uh, great training partners, know some softball softball guys because Brandon Rovo is a softball guy, a little taller than normal from for the weight class. And thankfully, I have great, great training partner for this fight again. Yeah, and like a good, was... a good mix of training partners too. By the sounds of it, you got some up and comers, you got some pro guys, you got some UFC level guys. So sounds like a pretty good variety. What's it like now being at the stage of your career where you're sort of the veteran now? I'm sure there was a point when you were sort of the the prospect, the up and comer. What's it like having guys look up to you in the gym now? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, like I just made 30 years old, and now I'm kind of feel like. A little bit more old than I was before, and like you said, now I'm not just the, the up coming anymore, and it's good. I hope that I I'm doing a good job because, like you said, a lot of people is looking up to me and like following my steps, and I try my best every day to be a good example for those guys and to keep doing my part daily. And we still got a lot of time before the fight, but how's the weight cut going? The weight cut is good. Like we have uh, three more weeks for the fight. Uh, of course, I'm not that down before uh, everything, but I've been doing a good diet uh, like two months before, of course, with a lot of calories. I'm not cutting calories. I'm not crazy to doing that such early, but my body is perfect. Now it's ready for start to getting the weight down and doing a great weight cut on the fight week. 
That's great. What's one thing you miss that you can't eat during training camp that you really miss eating? Uh, I eat almost everything that I like. It's more okay. about the portion, you know. Like I cannot eat like pizza daily. Of course, I love pizza, but I cannot eat pizza daily. But I, I eat so a couple of slices in the weekend and stuff like that. Uh, like Japanese food, I think it's more. In, in the final part, it's more about the quantity. You know, you always want to eat a little bit more than you have to do when you cut down calories, you know. But I, I kind of diversify my menu and I eat a lot of things and I like to cook as well. So this helped me to understand what I can do and what I can uh, I can eat and also satisfying my my taste. Yeah, no, good good mix by the sounds of it. Uh, who's going to be making the trip down there with you to uh, to Kansas City? Who's going to be in your corner? So this will be interesting because my girlfriend won a PA. She'll be fighting a week before on Miami oh, cool. card. And then we will fly a little bit earlier because we're flying for her fight from Miami like a week before. And then we have uh, Pedro Falcon is going with us. He's not just one of our coaches, but he also a training partner. And he used to fight on Bantamweight, so it's perfect for me. Uh, he can like simulate a little bit of my opponent and stuff like that. We can keep having a uh, good training. We, we also have Mateus Nakash, which is our kickboxing coach here. He used to train Aldo for the last like five years, I guess. And when I came to Novo Union, he was making his transition from kickboxing to MMA. At the same time, he is on from, from my weight class, so he's a, also a perfect training partner for me for those weeks. And he'll be there, like, coaching us and also training for us. And my manager and also one of my head coaches, because he helps me a lot on organizing my routine of training and stuff like that, Eduardo Alonso will be there with us too, helping to organize all the week and everything. So we have a really strong team going there. And also Andre Pedernitas, he's going for my fight only because have a lot of things. Uh, I was going to make his uh, boxing fight on April 1st and have other guys going. So he cannot go to Luana fights, but he'll be on my fight week as well. So we have a really strong team and be ready, man. I'm ready to finish the mission with the golden key, like we said here in Brazil, like you say here in Brazil. There you go. And, and you kind of reference it there. How do you see this fight playing out between you and Brandon Royville? What's your prediction? Yeah, I can see a pretty aggressive fight because that's how Brandon Royville is. He looks to put on the pace. He looks to go forward. And he also looks to mix things up. He's a great. He's good on the stri striking game, also good on the submission game, the grappling game. So I see a fight that will be happening in all areas of MMA. You know, we have to be sharp in all areas. And for sure, it will be a great fight for the fans. I, I, I'm sure about it because the way they style of this and stuff like that is going to come forward and we're going to have a good brawl. How many more fights do you have on your UFC contract? I was wondering about that. Yeah, we just renew a new one. Uh, four fights now, or five, if I'm not, not mistaken. That's, congratulations. That's great, man. You must be excited yeah. about that. Yeah, I'm happy with everything you all the the walk into here and to renew on a good contract. You, I'm was I'm really happy with that and exciting to show that I really deserve that on April 15th. Well, this means a lot as well because you're another one of these guys that was I think released uh you know in from the UFC a long, you know a while ago for for no good reason. You 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 performed very well and now to get this other contract, that's got to mean a lot to you because it's been a harder road for you than say others. Yeah, for sure it was, and and not just that part of my career when I was released was difficult. Everything, you know, the way I go back, you know, I f I fought all the fights that I had in my contract. So with Max, that was the last fight of my contract. So it was not that easy path, you know, to to get here. But I think it was, you know, I think I, I proved my value, and now I'm in a good position, the position that I deserve in the top five, fighting against another top five opponent, you know. Uh, and I'm happy, man. I'm happy for everything and exercising to to keep it, doing my best daily and keep improving to myself, firstly, that I deserve to be where I, I, I am right now. Well, if you and get I a win here... Much I more as, 
Yeah. I, I was going to say, if you get a win here, especially a stoppage win, uh, you got to be close to fighting for the title, I would think. Um, you know, I know probably Pantoja is going to get the next shot, but how close do you think you are with a win here to getting a UFC flyweight title shot? Yeah, I think I'm I'm pretty close. This can be a contenders fight, like you said, especially if I finish the fight before the the finish, you know, or even like if uh, it's a really good uh, win, you know, like really dominant and exciting to watch. But to be honest, I'm not really concerned about that. I have a huge challenge in front of me, and I'm more cons- I'm more focused on proving my value, you know, and putting everything that I'm working daily, not just right now in this training camp, but there's a lot of things that I'm training and I'm I'm putting work daily from the last like 15 years of my life. And I hope to bring everything on the fight day and show all my, of my skill and all of my hard work. I'm focused on that more than getting the title short or something like that. You know, I want to enjoy the morning, do my best. Yeah, and we're looking forward to it, man. What a fight this is. April 15th, UFC Fight Night. Uh, Matthias, thank you so much for joining me. If there's anyone you'd like to thank before we get out of here, any sponsors or any social media, I'll give you the last word. Okay. Uh, Thank you, James, for having me. Uh, It's an honor. Anytime you want, just give me a call and you set it up. And I want to thank everybody that is with me since the beginning, you know, like cheering, teaching, helping anyway, all of my training partners. Uh, this is individual sport, but we have a lot of people working with us, uh, strength and conditional coach, doctors, training partners, all coaches in all areas, you know, MMA is a big area of sport, you know, we have wrestling and striking and grappling, uh, and everything. So I wanted to thank everybody that's uh, helping me and believing me and keeping uh, watching my work. And I hope that I give can put all of my hard work in the octagon on April 15 and get another victory. Thank you, James.